TV. If you are new here, please don't forget to stop, like, comment, and subscribe. So, before I get into today's video, if you like my makeup right now, I did do a video on it earlier this week. It was uploaded Monday, so make sure you check it out. And yeah, like, share, and comment. So today, I had to build up a lot of nerve to make today's video. And if any of my family watch this, <laughs> don't call me after you watch this. I'm not going to answer. Today, I just want to speak on my experience of being the Beyonce of the family because it is not easy. No, but for real though, we are going to talk about being the black sheep of our family. Every family has that one person. They might not, each family might not treat each black sheep severely, but you get treated away and we're going to talk about it. So there are a few ways to identify yourself as a black sheep of your family, but the main common one is the noticeable differences in between you and your family. Whether it's your appearance or your general behavior, your attitude, your job, your moral, your spirituality, different beliefs you have, the list goes on and on. But it's mainly those sensitive subjects that make you stand out. And with being the black sheep when you're younger, yeah, you try to, you know, fit in because you wanna be normal, you wanna, you know, you want everybody to like you, you wanna be the favorite cousin and all this different type of stuff. But as you get older, like your heart's never really in it. And just as you get older, you don't care. And your refusal to adapt or your lack of effort can come off as judgment towards your family. They can take it as judgment. And that causes them to then, you know how sometimes you feel like you don't do anything, you're just being yourself? Well, because of their feeling of judgment from you, it causes them to lash out with criticism towards you and behind your back. And then a lot of families, some families or family members are just so desperate for approval that they are quick to point out where you fall short. They are quick to point out all of your flaws and stuff and sometimes it could just be haterade. Like they see something in you that you don't see in yourself and they don't like it and they might feel like you're better than them or they might feel like you think you're better than them and so they just lash out. Another way that helps you identify whether you're the black sheep in your family is if you just don't share things that you like or you're just, you're not open with your family and your family doesn't know like a lot of your hobbies, things that you like, they can't name anything. And it's because you don't share with them because you feel like you don't expect anybody to be interested or you don't think that they will accept you. You think they're gonna criticize you because that's all that they do. And then the last thing that's very common for black sheep, even if it's minor or even if it's just out there is people using you as a scapegoat. I was the scapegoat when it came to my cousin. We are about three years apart, but of course, like when you're in high school, three years apart is a big gap. You know, I'm going through stuff, like I'm a teenager, so things that I was going through at 17 are very, very different from the things that she was going through at 14. So I made a lot of my mistakes first, but whenever she made any mistakes, it was always because of me. It was always my fault. I was told, you know, that I was a bad influence on her and that a lot of the decisions she made was because I peer pressured her, which is completely not true, y'all. Now, I used to do things to get in trouble when I was in high school like any other teenager, but because my dad had the pressure of raising me as a single father and because of my background as far as me and my mom, um, my dad didn't handle certain situations the best way. And my cousin's mom was even crazier than my dad, I feel like. I was 100% happy that I had my dad as a parent than her mom. So I would always be in her ear like, you know, I did this, don't do this, you're gonna get in trouble, da 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 And even though I did that, mm, it wasn't recognized and people just felt like I was lying. But what people don't know is, I got in trouble for a lot of stuff in high school 
but my cousin was sneaky a lot of the stuff that i got caught doing she was doing before i even attempted to do it like a lot of things that i got in trouble for in my family she was already doing it and that's kind of where i kind of got the balls to do it <laughs> Cause she was younger than me and I was like, well, you know, if she doing it and she ain't getting caught, I ain't gonna get caught, you know? But just because I got caught don't mean I'm a snitch. And just because, you know, people like to say that it was my fault doesn't mean that I'm gonna rat her out either. I don't fold under pressure, baby. But yeah, people just always used to compare me to her and she was younger than me. So people will always be like, why can't you be more like her? And this is and that and that used to really really bother me and get under my skin because i'm like why can't i just be me it made me feel like i would never be accepted if i didn't have this type of attitude or i didn't do this and i didn't do that and it's just like you get to a point where you just don't care and you start to feel like well nobody's trying to get to know the real me nobody cares so i'm gonna just be me and it is what it is okay so the main thing that i got in trouble for in high school was of course sneaking my boyfriend over to the house now i never snuck him inside the house yes i did i just like to not count it because my dad never found out and i mean we weren't in my room or anything like that we like and we didn't do anything so i was just like he came over i snuck him in from downstairs and then my grandma all of a sudden just had to be downstairs because there was something wrong with the downstairs bathroom and he had to dip was literally there maybe all of two seconds but anyway this ain't what this about i got in trouble for meeting up with him or having him meet me at the house outside the house and stuff like that or going other places to meet him when the reality is my cousin was a pro and she was doing it way before i even started whoever my cousin was seeing used to literally come up the street from my grandma's house to see her all the time and she never got caught and it was just so crazy to me because i always got caught and i'm like but of course when i got caught that's when i started being in her ear like look if you get caught it's a done deal like we would get left at her house by ourselves and I wouldn't even know anything. She never told me either. She never would be like, hey, so-and-so is coming by. Da, da, da. I just walk outside and her boyfriend's there. And I'm like, must be nice. But despite all that I've been through, like from being compared to her to being blamed for everything that she ever did, I never let that affect our friendship because me and my cousin have a genuine friendship. Now, we went through a little phase where we weren't really feeling each other, but I never, I purposely never was just like, oh, I don't mess with her, no, 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 no. Like I wasn't like that towards her. And because of that, I didn't want to be that way towards her just because of how my family was making me feel. So. Something that a lot of people don't realize is when you're treated like a black sheep in the family, it is somewhat a form of abuse and it can lead to you masking. So daily self-care is very, very important for people like this because you've constantly been told all these things that hurt you or break you down. And most of us, because of who it's coming from and how many times we hear it and how many family members have the same opinion, and nobody's really coming up to you and say, hey, it's okay, you know, adults are just tripping, you know, it can lead to you feeling and thinking these things of yourself. When I started going to therapy, I had to realize that the way that people, even if they are in my family, the way that they think of me and the way that they see me is their responsibility and their feelings. And I had to learn to separate that from my own. I used to feel like I was just straight up ugly and stupid. And it was because it was something that I always heard. I was constantly being picked apart. And I was bullied in school. So it's like I would go to school and hear certain things. And then I'm coming home and hearing even worse things. And it wasn't until my therapist really broke it down for me like... You know, a lot of people don't know my backstory, but I'll just remember telling my therapist, you know, everybody thinks I'm stupid and da 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 da. And it's like this person would yell at me or talk to me this kind of way and call me stupid because I didn't know something. And then they would taunt me and say, oh, your cousin knows this and she's younger than you and da 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 da. -da. But I'm not being taught these things. And y'all, I moved in with my dad about ninth or 10th grade year at the end of ninth grade year 10th grade year and so his family was already just kind of away and i had grew up in a different household and so a lot of things that i did and stuff like that you know i wasn't taught 
a lot of things and it just would hurt me like I felt like I wasn't able to make mistakes or learn from my mistakes I felt like I was made to feel like I was my mistakes and that that's just how I am I'm just stupid and I just remember crying to my therapist and telling her how I felt and she's like well, why would you feel bad or feel stupid about something that you weren't taught? How are you supposed to know if no one teaches you? If anything stupid is the grown ass adults who are calling you stupid or trying to make you feel stupid for something they know you weren't taught. And that was the day that I really tried to change my view of myself and start saying stuff like I'm not stupid and stuff like that because y'all it was so bad i it caused me to really have social anxiety because i felt like once i got in front of people or if i started talking people would think that i'm stupid so i used to literally get on my phone and get on the computer and google just a whole bunch of different subjects so that when i was around people and i had to conversate i had multiple topics to talk about and I knew what I was talking about so that I could sound smart. And it just gave me so much anxiety talking to people because the whole time in my head, I'm like, at some point they gonna think I'm stupid. And then it would just lead to me not talking much at all. And then it just made me become not a people person and not want to talk to people. But before I got to that point, I did get to the point to where I was masking. And basically what masking is, is when you're trying to be something or somebody that you're not, to be more relatable, to make people like you, or to seem normal. And my dad would call me out on it all the time and I would feel so embarrassed when he did because he'd just be like, stop trying to act like somebody that you're not. And I would just be so shamed because I was like, from little things that I would say, little things that I would do, like all that, my dad would catch it every time and be like. And because I was never really trying to be my true self, I never really knew who I was. And because I had all of these outside voices telling me who I was, talking down on my character and all these different things, that's who I thought I was. And I remember trying so hard not to be that image to the point to where I was being somebody that I completely was not. But like I said, going to therapy is something that really, really helps. When you're down that deep as a black sheep to where you realize that you're masking, it is okay to seek therapy, no matter what skin tone you are. But over everything, it's very, very important for you to know that what they think of you, what they say you are, all these different things. If these are people are not taking the time to actually get to know you and they're just making assumptions and judging you off your mistakes, their opinion, what they think of you, is their opinion. You have to know who you are enough to know that that's their opinion, that's who they think I am, but that's not who I am. And most of us do it because it's hard. It's your family, it's people who are supposed to love you and all this different type of stuff. And so when they're saying these things, it's easy to be like, this is what I am. My family knows me, they've known me my whole life. This is who I am. No, it's not, sweetie. And then once you're able to identify that behavior and you know, me thinking that I'm you know, ugly and I'm stupid and all this different type of stuff, I had to completely detox that from my mental and then fill myself up with positive things. So it's very, very important to practice self-compassion. All the things that you feel like you aren't getting from other people, you have to put into yourself. When you are the black sheep in your family, I cannot express to you how valid, how important, how necessary it is to create boundaries. You have to come to the realization on your own that it's okay to block people who make you feel not good about yourself, even family. Now, this is harder to do when you're younger, especially if you were in a situation like mine, because I was basically house hopping, like growing up. My dad worked on oil rigs and stuff like that, so he was never home. I wasn't with my mom, and even when I was with my mom, I was living with grandparents and stuff like this. So I was constantly house hopping. So it's a little harder to get away from certain negativity when you're so reliant on multiple family members because your parents aren't able to be there for you. But even if it's just removing yourself from a room when there's a uh, toxic energy in the room that makes you feel bad about yourself, 
that talks down on you and make you feel a certain way, it's okay to remove yourself. I spent most of my time growing up in my room. I never came out of my room. And I was criticized for that. You know, I was talked about, oh, she thinks she better than everybody. That's why she can't come and sit in the living room with everybody. No, that's not why I'm in there. And that's exactly why I'm not coming in there. Because who wants to be around energy like that? If you're my family and you have a problem with me being in my room, why don't some people's mindset go, oh, well, this person's always closed off. They're always like, they're not really trying to interact with anybody. Maybe they're going through something. Maybe there's something wrong. Maybe I need to talk to this person more because I don't even really know that person instead of, oh, she thinks she's better than everybody. It's also okay not to update your family on certain things that you're doing. The main reason I don't share <laughs> almost anything that I'm doing until I've already done it is because I don't like for people to speak negatively on my plans. If I'm planning to do something and it's in my heart and it's something I wanna do, I don't want to hear about what you would do. I don't want to hear about how stupid you think it is. Like, be happy for me and move on. If you think it's stupid, that's fine. My thing is, if you think it's stupid and you think that it's such a bad idea, why not pull me to the side and talk to me like you care about me and be like, are you sure this is what you want to do, da 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 instead of just spewing negativity out on me and talking to other people about how I'm ruining my life instead of talking shit to other family members. So I don't share certain things because it gives me the option to control the narrative. You can think this about me, you can think that about me, but if you don't really know anything about me because I'm not sharing it with you, you're only, you can only form your opinion of me, of me based on the things that you see or the things that I share. So I control certain things that you see and I control certain things that I share so that I can control the narrative. Boundaries. Now a lot of people just like to handle the situation head on. Me, because I'm older and I'm starting to realize how much trauma I really went through as a child and realize how the certain adults treated me as a child and they knew some of the things that I was going through and they, they, as an adult they should be able to process and understand like I feel like they should be able to process and understand a lot of the things that I was going through and instead of being compassionate uh, pouring or pouring the same amount of love into me as much as they were hate and negativity it makes me very much hostile that's why i said don't nobody call me i feel like i've held in a lot of things that hurt me for so long and with certain people being adults it just it rubs me the wrong way and i don't think that i am able to talk about it especially if you come at me sideways like i don't think that i could have the calm response that I should. I ain't there yet. Now, if you come to me and you talk to me like a person and da da da, then we can get somewhere. But if you don't, it's a no holds bar match. I'm grown, I'm say what I wanna say. Nobody took it easy on me growing up. Nobody held their tongue. Everybody said to my face how they felt and when they felt it and said in it, and all kinds of stuff. So yeah, when I was younger, I couldn't really, I had no control over my boundaries. And most of it was because, you know, I went through a lot with my parents. And we've come a long way. Both of my parents, both of my parents have apologized to me for my upbringing and you know even my dad you know me and him talk now he even apologized to me for being as harsh as he was to me growing up and he's like you know I look back on it now and I see that times where I felt like you were being disrespectful or you might have like lashed out and stuff like that you were really going through something you know my dad stepped up and he was like you know I knew you were a sensitive child and the way that I responded to you the way that I reacted to certain things and the way that I handled you was wrong. Like he's like, I see that now as an adult, I was dead wrong for how I treated you. Girl, this is not that type of video. We is not finna cry on camera. So yeah, um, one of the one of the things that I brought to my dad's attention was you know, because he didn't respect certain things when it came to me, other people didn't respect it. And because everybody knew I was a quiet one and 
I'm not gonna say anything and stuff like that. Like, it just made it worse. But there are definitely a lot of things that I felt like when I tried to talk to my dad about certain things that I was going through, you know, I'll do y'all better. I'll give y'all an example so that y'all can understand where I'm coming from. And we about to get deep. So one of my mom's ex-husbands um, used to be very inappropriate with me. And so I finally came out and told my dad and of course he didn't take it too well. Well, I didn't know my dad told other people in our family. And that was something that was very traumatic for me. That was something that took a lot out of me to even get out like me and my dad my dad put me in the car and we were just driving and he was trying to talk to me he was trying to get me to get it out because he could kind of read in between the lines of what I was trying to say but I couldn't just bring it out of me to say it so when I went to visit a family member I forgot what I did to piss this family member off most of the time I really didn't do anything to piss this family member off this family member just always kind of spoke really really harshly to me and she said to me well if you had any common sense you would have knew that you were supposed to tell an adult mind you i was 11 years old when this happened like what y'all i was so shook i wasn't expecting it i was so shook when it was said to me i wanted to explode i wanted to just go off but I just didn't have the courage. I just remember feeling so weak and stupid. And I finally told my dad that like that was said to me not too long ago. And he was just like, oh, you should have told me and da 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 da. But when you think that all of your family thinks a certain thing of you, me in my head, I just felt like, well, you told this person that, so I'm guessing this person said this to you when you agreed. I'm thinking that you all have the same mindset because you all have the same mindset when it comes to me. So I didn't really expect you to take up for me. On top of me living with that person at the time, like, whatever. We're too sidetracked, so yeah, that's just an example. And trust me, I got examples for days. <laughs> So even though as a black sheep, there's so many things that happen, there's so many things that are said that you kind of hold on to, it's very, very important to seek therapy if you need it, but it's very, very important to not hold on to those negative experiences. For a very, very long time, I just completely stayed away from my family and didn't really communicate with anybody because I'm a grudge holder, y'all. But I had to learn that people grow and even at the time, even though at the time, you know, and still to this day, I wouldn't say anything to anybody about how they made me feel because I feel like, you know, you're an adult and most adults are set in their ways. And when an adult says something or they have a certain mindset, like, especially with how strong headed my family is, like, it's just, it was, it's not worth it to me. But what I had to learn is not let those negative experiences affect my relationship with other people. You know, not always assume that everybody has the same opinion of me. Not assume that all criticism that I get from everybody is bad criticism. But you also have to focus on how, what your family has put you through. Focus that on how to deal with other people who sometimes trigger that trauma. You know, we are gonna forgive, but we ain't gonna forget. I don't let nobody call me stupid. I don't let nobody call me stupid. I don't let nobody try to talk to me like I'm stupid. I don't let nobody try to make it seem like when I'm sitting there talking that I'm stupid. I just don't play like that. And you can either respect it or don't. But if you don't, I remember a while back talking to my dad and this was like a while back, but I was talking to him about how I felt. You know, I've talked to my grandmother about how I felt about certain people in my family and certain things that happened to me. I've opened up and talked to her about it. I've talked to my dad about it. And when I talked to my dad, he was like, well, sometimes it's good that you have a family that's like that towards you because if you're used to people being harsh to you and harsh to you, in the real world when somebody's being harsh to you, it won't affect you. You'll know how to deal with it. You'll have thick, it makes you have thick skin. And then he kind of used an analogy like, if you sit outside in the cold after so long, you won't even feel that it's cold anymore. I told that to my therapist and y'all. <laughs> 
she was like that is not healthy <laughs> if something is hurting you get out you don't just sit there and take it because you think that it's making you a stronger person if it's hurting you and you let it tear you down tear you down tear you down tear you down you're gonna get to a point to where it's really 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 hard to get back up if you get back up at all she was like if you sit out in the cold and it's too cold for too long you gonna die don't let nobody kill you and then i also had to look at the fact that now when my dad said that to me i was kind of like oh well i guess that's kind of smart but what i didn't realize is i was being bullied at school because of how my family conditioned me now when i say i was bullied at school i'm talking about people talking negative to me spewing negative energy at me I, I, did nobody put their hands on me uh -uh. but i was considered lame and i never really stood up for myself when people would say things about me or say things to me i would never like give them that same energy back and i realized that that came from me me being the same way with my family my family would say certain things to me or be hostile towards me and i wouldn't say anything because i felt like okay this person is an adult they're older than me like i'm not gonna be disrespectful uh just take the high road i know if i say anything it's gonna be bad we're probably gonna fight and stuff like that so i would just take the high road so when i would go to school i would correlate that with oh this person is popular this person is more like i'm not gonna say anything because it's gonna become a huge deal and we're probably gonna end up fighting girl you should have just fought them but i felt like these people in high school were superior to me so i didn't retaliate which is the same thing that i had got because i was so used to people just talking down on me and saying things to me that when i went to school it was kind of just the same thing try that now though Somebody come try that. I wanna. I'm. I'm trying to see something. Huh? What was it? Oh. Okay. You talking shit? Oh, you not? Okay. Just making sure. <laughs> Bitch, your ass gonna die today. But yeah, y'all know how kids are, especially the scary ones. Because I was known not to say anything. It became cool to say something to me because they knew I weren't going to do anything. But what would kill me is that same day that my dad tried to tell me about sitting out in the cold. He also, when I would tell him about me constantly being compared to my cousin and all this stuff. He also was like, oh, well, they don't joke on her as much or they don't say as much to her because they know she's so sensitive and she'll probably cry and stuff like that. And I just remember feeling like, okay, but what about me? I'm sensitive. Why I gotta cry to get them to stop talking to me a certain way or joking on me so bad about certain things that I'm very insecure about? Why can't I have that same respect? You know, growing up, I was always called a dude because I wore shorts and a ponytail and t-shirt and stuff like that. I always, I guess, dressed very tomboyish and looked very tomboyish. But the thing is, y'all know me as an adult. I can't do my hair. I don't know how to do hair. All my aunties do hair. I didn't buy my own clothes. Nobody has ever, except for my aunt on my mom's side. She would come down, but she would want me to buy like dress pants and stuff like church stuff. She wanted me to look professional but she would let me pick it out but other than that nobody ever just took me to the store and asked me what i like i was always given things and i remember my dad bought 500 dollars worth of hollister clothes one christmas and that's just this is when hollister was just in and i remember i didn't like none of it but i couldn't say like my dad spent over 500 dollars on all this stuff so i i couldn't i couldn't be like i don't like this so i just wouldn't wear it and then i would complain about me not really having clothes like that and then people were oh your dad bought you this and you never wear it blah, 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 blah. like my dad went to the store and pop, picked out stuff that he liked my dad everybody had so much to say about my style and all that different type of stuff now as an adult i can buy my own clothes and every time i post a picture on facebook my family i'll never forget my cousins pulling me to the side like are you okay I am better than ever. Better than ever, baby. But yeah, I don't got too off track. Anyways, like I said, I got an example for days. But the point is, learn to deal with people accordingly. And a lot of people don't know your triggers and your trauma. 
So don't just explode on them because they aren't the one who created that trauma. They don't know. So just learn how to interact with others so that you're just not a walking bomb. And like I said, focus on the positive things that has come out of you being the black sheep. Focus on the times you being a black sheep was a positive thing or somebody has said something to you. Hold on to those positive things more than you do those negative things is what I'm trying to say. Understand that there are people out there who love you, all of you, authentic you, and they don't want you to change anything about you. That is your chosen family. Embrace them, love them, and understand just as this group of people have accepted you and loved you, there's so many more people in the world that are like that. You ain't for everybody, and sometimes it be your own family, but there are people out there who will love you and support you down. Hold them tight to you, hold them close to you, appreciate them, and be good to them. And learn to be that person for somebody else. Learn to take your experiences and, and trauma and all that, those other things. Understand that, use that to relate to the next black sheep and give love to the next black sheep because you understand how they feel. Do not water yourself down for anybody. Now, I'm the type of person, if a hundred different people got the same opinion on you, maybe it's true. I'm not telling you to be just a butthole out here, but understand people who find confidence in themselves, people who find strength in their weaknesses, that intimidates a lot of people. So you're gonna intimidate a lot of people, you're gonna make people feel some type of way. I went through my whole life trying to understand why certain people treat me a certain way? Why certain people don't like me? Oh, I used to be, oh my gosh, bad on that. Like, I couldn't stand for nobody to not like me because I felt like I was just such a likable person. I don't bother anybody. I don't do, you know, malicious things to anybody. I'm nice. I truly have a big heart and I give. And even though I hold a grudge, cause baby, I hold a grudge. I don't even treat people who have wronged me any type of way. I still, like I've had people who talk crazy to me, talk crazy down on me, I don't have to cuss them out and all that stuff. And they still will come and need something from me and stuff and I don't let me not fooling with them or me not, I don't let that affect me helping them. I have even shocked some people who don't like me because they don't expect me to step up and be there for them or do certain things that I have for them. But that's just me. And y'all, like I said, like from my family, there's so many things that have been said to me about my character, about who people thought that I was, like about just people assuming things about my character. And I just sit in there and I'm like, that's not even like what? I've never even portrayed to be this type of person and that's what you get from me. It can be very insulting. It can be a slap in the face, but I understand now as an adult that that's not who I am. I am a very, very sweet person and I have a very big heart and I'm a very loving person who just has a list of people that I'm waiting for to fuck with me. Watch my toes, don't step on them. But it's very, very important for you to process that rejection and move forward from it. And understand that everybody not gonna like you. It be your own family sometimes, and that's fine. Focus on you, because even though I've had all this negative stuff said about me and my life and all this different type of stuff, I'm traveling the world right now, I'm doing what I love, and I just, like, I have a very blessed life. And there's nothing that nobody can ever say to me or no opinion that anyone could ever have of me to make me feel otherwise. Sometimes you just have to look at certain family members and understand that as a black sheep, like I look back on some of the things that I've been through growing up and I understand that most of the people who have had something to say about me, who have criticized me, who've had anything negative, say, negative to say, could not take five steps in my shoes, would completely fold under pressure. I can't let somebody who had a completely different upbringing from me 
you know, lived in a two-parent household, had a better upbringing than me, had a better social life than me, had all these opportunities, and I can't let nobody like that make me feel bad about what I've been through or who I am as a person. You're not cut like me. I understand that I serve a bigger purpose and that everybody not cut like me. But as y'all know on this channel, I push therapy and if you are a black sheep please even if you feel like you know you haven't had any negative like traits or things going on in real if you feel like you're not just if you're not affected by it trust me go to therapy because it took me as an adult to understand a lot of the things that I had went through and to be able to process them I did not realize the things that I had been through as a child were very traumatic until I went to therapy you know, my therapist, when I was talking to her and stuff like that, she would always say, you know, for somebody who wasn't taught a lot of different things, for somebody who's been through what you've been through, you are very headstrong, you are very smart. Like, she's poured so much positivity into me and just made me feel so important, needed, loved, and just all the things that I needed growing up. So I really, really encourage you, if you feel like, you know, you're the black sheep of your family and you feel like, you know, nothing you ever do is good enough for your family or you're hearing a lot of negative things about yourself to the point to where you think that, or you feel like you're a bad person, I highly recommend going to therapy because I can give you all the advice in the world, but I don't know you personally. And I can't help you through, everybody's experience is different. And sometimes us as people need specific things to be said to us in order for us to truly resolve it and move on from it. I can truly say here as a person that even though both of my parents have apologized to me for my upbringing and apologized to me for certain things that I've been through as a child, I can honestly say had they not done that, I would still be okay. Now, it makes it a whole, you know, thousand times better that they have. It makes me emotional every time I think about it. It makes me happy. I actually have a relationship with my parents. And, you know, nobody's opinion of my parents, nobody, what they think. I don't care what nobody thinks. You know, my parents have been the only people who I have not really just been able to hold a grudge against. Like, if they apologize to me, I'm going to accept it. <laughs> and Because I just, I, I want that relationship so bad. And it, all, it hasn't always been healthy, but I'm just blessed that I have the heart that I have to where I'm able to reconnect that relationship every time. And I'm also able to step away when I need to. And that's really what it took. You have to be okay with not getting closure from certain people or certain situations. Whew, okay, that was a lot that was very very heavy so that is all i have for today do not forget to scroll down below in the description box because the links to my social medias will be down below so go check out my pictures and stuff and make sure that i'm okay <laughs> so if you have a friend and you feel like they needed to hear something that i said today do not forget to tag them down below and also go in the comment section and let me know some of the things that you've experienced as a black sheep and share positive things in the comment section to help other people get through some of the things that they're feeling so share certain things that you've done that have helped you to move forward from being a black sheep in the family do not forget to like share comment and subscribe and i will see y'all in the next video